Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great week, folks. Let's say make it a great month. You're going to love it. June 1st, here we go. Don't make assumptions. Ask for what you want. This is a great card, man. Find the courage to ask for what you want. Others have the right to tell you yes and no, but you always have the right to ask. Likewise, everyone has the right to ask you for what they want, and you have the right to say yes or no. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 102, Nasdaq's off 28, S&P's off 15 and a half, gold contract up $3.50, traded 1851 an ounce. Get silver up 24 cents, $21.93 an ounce. Light sweet crude up 63 cents, $115.30 a barrel. Notes and bonds, they continue to move lower in price, higher in yield, folks. You get the 10 deal right now, trading down 27 ticks at 118.19. The 30 year off almost a full point at 138.16. 10 years yielding 2.935. The high thus far has been 3.126. King dollar. King dollar's got a bounce going out here today. Up 750 ticks, trading 102,504. Euro 106. Yen 130.14. And the British pound is at 124 to 1 US dollar. iPhone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? You got another sideways market out here, folks. You got window dressing happening. Uh, bottom line is, you know, we'll see where this wants to go. My take is that we're building cars for lower price. Now, let me show you. We had rebalancing yesterday, folks. And what you'll see out here is that you did get an acceleration of volume. See that $2.3 billion inside the NYSE? Uh, bottom line, then we go over and we take a look at the uh, NASDAQ composite, and the composite gets $6 billion. Okay, so now let's go back to the Dow Industrials for a second and just take a look at this, because this always gets a little bit tricky when you actually get that much volume. And so <laughs> this is a tough one, man, because the bottom line is that what we actually did, you know, we actually went higher than the day before, and we had higher volume. So that had to be tested. Now, the sad part is that it got tested out here today. It would have been better if the thing could have just blow, blow forward. My point goes like this. When we talk about bullish or bearish, that was actually a bullish occurrence. You know, so we'll see where this shakes out. My take is that we're building cars, you know, to basically, you know, lower price. Uh, but that was a bullish occurrence. What I've found is this. It doesn't matter. Well, hey, let's go to the, that's the composite too. So if we take a look at the composite, you're going to see the composite also got to higher price. Okay, so we had volume. And I've found that even in rebalancing, that if you can get higher volume, then you have a shot to do something. Now, the problem today is, is that it's getting higher and it's going to close lower. So that bottom line is saying it's a building cause once again. And I'm bringing this all the way back to any of you folks that were around in whether it's 1999, 2000, uh, when these companies one by one start going south, meaning WorldCom and JDSU and all these other companies, you could really find out a lot about rebalancing and where the volume went. And in those particular cases, the, the volume came out and those rebalancing days, they were down. So it's like, okay, man, here you go. You're going to go lower. Gold. Gold contract out here today with gold did. That gold rejected lower price out here. We got down to 1830. You can trade in 1851, and we'll see whether gold can do a small ABC structure up. You know, right now, uh, the last swing point is 1875. You know, we hit 1830. This wouldn't be a bad one. This would be, uh, let's see. Yeah, it's, it's almost uh, 85 bucks, which would get you somewhere up to about the 1910. Yeah, that would make sense, because next swing point is 1917. And that would be the place. So, so what happened with gold, folks, if you're in that market, is that the real resistance is going to be trying to get back in the higher zone. Getting it back in the higher zone in gold is that price point of 1920. Now, let's go to platinum. Platinum, bottom line, has a bid underneath it. And it's like, I was trying to find it like, okay, man, they're buying it. That's the bottom line. 
You take a look at platinum out here. You got some, this is wide price spread, accelerated volume. This is say, you know, platinum is at 966 right now. You just took out the swings. The swings were at 993. Um, good setup, man. This is saying the platinum's gonna start making its way back up to the 1190 area. King dollar. Now, this is a little problem child once again. You got good old king dollar. That's up 751 ticks today. Now that is a nice move. Um, you know, we'll see whether it's going to be a counter trend move, but right now it's a decent move. This king dollar could get up somewhere about 103, 226. Now let me just bring this back. I got to bring this back on a much further basis. So if we put this on a monthly, okay, so the number to keep your eye on actually is, I see, okay, 103, 103, 820 is the number, because that was the breakout area. That's where it failed. So key, that's going to be the number, 103, 820. We're going to take a look at the note and bond market. We pull up the note, the 10-year note first. What you're going to see with the 10-year note, you're down 27 ticks. This says volume behind the move. You got 1.5 million contracts. This very well could be a very large ABC structure on the way down, folks. That's how this thing is shaking out right now. Uh, your B point on this is going to be the low that was generated out here at 116.21. And, you know, keep in mind, Tommy was talking about this this morning. June 1st, we are at the basis of where the Fed is going to basically roll off the bonds as well as mortgage-backed securities. Now, the roll-off, what the roll-off specifically means is that they're just not going to replace what the roll-off is. And, you know, the news out here is not like an everyday event. Um... It starts today, but yet the first roll-off doesn't take place till June 15th. And what that roll-off means is that those bonds expire June 15th, and they won't use that additional $15 billion in order to buy more bonds. So what that does specifically is do, do what? There's going to be less demand, and there's going to be a supply. Not necessarily more supply, because what it has happened is this. Now, this is going to be the wild card in this, is that the amount of deficit that we are actually in has been going down because the stock market has gone so far up and asset prices have gone so far up that there was a huge amount of money going into the treasury. So this is going to get really intriguing, you know, how, as to what the supply actually is versus the demand. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. We have the Dow Industrials that down 49, NASDAQ's up 2, S&P's down 7. Come right back.